Hello and welcome everybody, all you degenerates. Welcome to the Degenerate Racing League. We are starting soon. The driver's qualifying session is just getting underway. Let's take a look at the race calendar, see what the drivers are all doing this week. We've been to Barcelona. We've been to Donington Park. We've been to Coda. We've been to Indianapolis. Brands Hatch in the rain was last week. We're at the Hungara Ring this week. Next week, we're taking a one-week break, only to resume at the 24 Hours of Nürburgring. Then we're headed out to Spa Kailami for some more rain and moisture, and Suzuka, Watkins Glen, and the Red Bull Ring, of course. Let's head over to the qualifying session and see what the drivers are all up to right now. Burt Macklin's in P1 right now with the number four attached to his car. Not anymore. Oliver Sorgan in the BMW is doing pretty good things right now in that Patronus BMW. Still getting things situated for myself. The BMW V8 4.4 liter pushing around 580 horsepower. It's got a lot of performance for the long straights and it is going to be good in these high speed sections. It's got good braking as well and balance allowing it to be confident for corner entries. This BMW is doing pretty good and is holding on to the top spot in the charts right now with a 144.5. Five. We've seen better times of Oliver Swargan already so far in this session. 
in the free practice session. He was managing to be able to pull down 143s. The temperatures were a little bit warmer. Cooper Atherton throws down the gauntlet. He's able to pull out a 144.42. Sogren is, although, improving just a little bit. He's got a little bit of purple attached to his name, but so does Daniel Hirsch, of all people. The number 48 driving a Mercedes AMG 6.3 liter V8 with 550 horsepower. Well-rounded car with strong braking aerodynamics and pretty good for both short and longer endurance events. Making it a favorite of Daniel Hirsch's for sure, in God We Trust, plastered on the rear wing of that AMG. Getting to the line right now, Daniel Hirsch is going to go provisional pole, and he does with a 144.345. That's good enough for provisional pole in his class and his division. Cooper Atherton and Sogren are going to have to do a lot to improve at this point in time. Neil Kerbel might be out to improve. He's got a 144.697 to his name. He's got three tenths in the bag himself. That 395 in the GTR. The Nissan GTR is a V6 twin turbo pushing around 550 horsepower as well. Really good on its traction and maintaining tire temperatures, which will be important for this race. You might be able to double stint those tires as Neil Kerbel's just finishing up the long back straight right now. And getting in towards a couple of the hairpins. He does not have that time in the bag anymore, excuse me. Fastest lap going out to Paul Hohen, a 144.3, and that snatches away Daniel Hirsch, Mitch Nayardi, and Cooper Atherton's best time. We got some purple sector times floating around right now. Joshua Rodriguez with a 44.252. In these 20 degree track temperatures, 20 degrees ambient temperature, the track has already gone optimum. The drivers have got another two minutes to put down their best qualifying laps that they can. Cooper Atherton's out here to improve in the lovely looking McLaren, the 720. In the 720. V8 twin turbo four liter, 720 horsepower, nimble car with really good aerodynamics, enhancing the downforce and stability at high speeds. It's got good tire management as well. Great for endurance races such as the one we're about to endure. Take a look at the standings right now. Mike Bowen's in first place. Neil Kerbel's in second place. Only 10, 18 points behind. Cooper Atherton's in third with 73 points. Daniel Hirsch, Paul Hohen, Burt Macklin, Oliver Sogren. Spencer Braun, Josh Rodriguez, Eric Acosti, and that's your top 10. Norris Yu, Mitch Nayardi, Frank Castle, Frederick Baugh, and Bradley Cooper rounded out for your top 15. Cooper Atherton is able to improve on that previous lap of his. 144 flat to his name. Doing pretty good pace around here right now. Josh Rodriguez holding on to second place. 11 minutes left in this qualifying session. As it looks like that 720 just finished up its start finish straight. Number five crosses the line, 23, 22 crossing the line now. Oliver Sorgen, where is he at out on track? He goes pole with a 144.020. Fastest lap out there right now, separated by just a couple hundredths between him and Cooper Atherton. Two tenths back is Joshua Rodriguez, and that'll be the end of his qualifying session for the Dive Bomb Motorsport team in the number 38 Patronus car. Can Cooper Atherton snatch it back potentially? All he needs is about a hundredth in his pocket to be able to beat him. Anything will do on this lap. He's lost two tenths overall right now i don't think he's able to improve what about joshua rodriguez is he out to improve he's nil right now 
No plus, no gain. Cooper Atherton sends it off into the S's, causes a yellow flag, and goes directly to the pits. That'll be the end of his qualifying session. Joshua Rodriguez sure is trying, though, and the drivers for the Pro-Am category and the Amateur category are rolling out of pit lane right as I say that. What's going on, Spenny B 2023? Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate the love and support. Thank you to everybody who's here tonight, who's giving out love and support by having the stream up in the background of the races. That'll be it for the qualifying session. Oliver Sorgren, Cooper Atherton, Mitch Nayardi is able to go into third position. Joshua Rodriguez, Daniel Hirsch, Paul Hohen, Burt Macklin, Cooper, Bradley Cooper, excuse me, Frank Castle, Shooter McGavin. And we got Neil Kerbel out in the pit lane as well, but he's in the pro category. He's out in the pit lane, that's why, but he's in the seventh position. Frank Castle down in 10th right now. Eric Kakassian rolling out just in 12th position, and that'll finish up his qualifying session. Tight times. Yeah, I thought you said night times. God, it's late for me. I'm sorry. No, tight times indeed. 100 separating Oliver Srogren and Cooper Atherton. 144.020 to 144.077. 144s all the way back, all the way down to P11, Shooter McGavin. So it's a one second gap all the way from P1 to P11. What's up, Spencer? Why aren't you here, Spencer Braun? I need answers. You're the one I grabbed Porsche data for tonight. Got Tyler Morgan rolling around in the Brundle AMR. The AMR GT3 features a 4.0 liter V8 twin turbo pushing around 500 horsepower. It's got good braking, balanced handling. It's got effective aerodynamics for maintaining stability at high speeds. Performs well on various track layouts, so it should do well in the twisty bits as well as at the straight runs. And Wes Romery also here, hopefully cleaning off the cat vomit off of his seat. Poor guy. Hopefully he's not sitting in it. Let's see, Shooter McGavin is the one that's upset everybody right now, and Grand Zahara as well in 11th and 14th, just dipping their wheel into the pro category for 11th and 14th position. Hitting the line right now is Tyler Morgan. And he's able to hold on to 14th with a 146.9. That'll split Grant Zahara. Who else is gonna go faster? Wes Romery does. Grant Zahara is in the pit lane now. What's up, Nyrads? Ah, oh, wheels in for warranty. That'll do it. Also, life. That'll do it, too. Russell Stanford right now with a 145.867. Wes Romery now down Donovan. Wes Romery gets bumped back. Don Donovan is able to go into 15th position. Tyler Morgan is in 17th position. Kevin Palahniuk is in 18th. Grant Zahara gets bumped down to 19. Don Fossman, not the Fossman out there tonight. He's got a 147.0. Nelson Hernandez, excuse me. Bradley Smith is able to promote himself up into 18th position. And who is that in the Porsche in the 410? That's Buggy Watt in the 410, and he's done a 150.387. And that'll keep him in 29th position. 32 drivers here tonight, everybody. 
So a lot of action up and down the grid. Nyrad saying that he could do better. Has a little bit of pace beneath him in chat. Well, it was good enough for P3. Hopefully he can keep it. Looks like the track map doesn't match the actual location. Uh... This is Hungaroring, right? I can check. I can double check. Oh, you're right. That's totally not the right track map. Thank you. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is Coda, isn't it? ACC Drive doing me dirty like that. Is that Coda? That is Coda, isn't it? That is interesting. Okay, back to the standard track map then. Thank you very much. Hey, Max Power, how are you doing? Thank you very much for the update. Thank you for letting me know. I was confused for a little while why everybody was going the wrong way around Hungaro Ring. But I wasn't gonna do I wasn't gonna do ACC TV or ACC Drive dirty like that. I was gonna let it slide. Let's talk about more qualifying times. Uh, Evans Vogue entered the top 10 with a 144.825. Russell Stanford in 15th. Don Donovan in 16th. Kevin Palahniuk in 17th. Wes Romery is in 18th. And Sean Chez in 19th. Tyler Morgan's going to be in 20th. Bumping everybody back right now. Uh, Palahniuk, Wes Romery, Sean Chez, Bradley Smith, Grant Zahara, Don Fossman, Hans Gruber, Nelson Hernandez, James May, Senior Tarugo. John Malott, not Joe Malou, or anything like that. Alan Young, Jay Paisa, Buggy Watt, and Ricky Bobby. I'll take Hungaro Ring over anything, pretty much. If you're in the top three of your class, or if you're one your category, you should be planning to come to the driver's room. Or I'll just snatch you away anyways. We'll see. But thank you very much, Nyrad. Thank you for having the stream up in the background. I appreciate it a lot. And thank you, everybody, for being here and even watching the stream while things are going on. Oliver Sorgan leads Cooper Atherton, Nayardi, Joshua Rodriguez, Daniel Hirsch. But the story right now is for Bradley Smith, Russell Stanford, Tyler Morgan, Don Donovan, Nelson Hernandez, Palinick, Sean Chez, Wes Romery, James May, Grant Zahara, Don Fossman, Hans Gruber, Senior Tarugo, Jay Paisa, John Malott, and Alan Young all out on track right now. And the drivers are trying to navigate the tricky Hungara ring circuit all in the dark. Opened in 1986, located in a town near Budapest, 2.7 miles long, 4.3 kilometers long, 14 turns, Makes a high speed straights and tight corners, and it's known for its technical challenges. Featuring racing series such as Formula One and also GT racing, touring cars, and endurance racing. Several low speed corners here. It has a technical circuit layout. The race is often held in very hot conditions, and we're facing degrees of 20 degrees Celsius right now, despite it being 1021 p.m. 
feels like it's 20 degrees in my living room right now. Kevin Palahniuk might be the one to improve right now for Team Bluey. 146.350 being his best lap out there right now. He's got four tenths, about half a second in his pocket right now. Let's see where that'll be able to promote him. It's a very tight grid tonight. So if he's able to improve by even just a couple tenths, he might be able to jump Don Donovan. But not getting close to Shooter McGavin out in front. Shooter McGavin's got a 145 flat to his name. So Kevin Palahniuk would have to improve by 1.5 to even get close. Don Fossman is out there to improve. He's got seven tenths in his hand right now. 147.0 being his fastest lap. And he's able to go up into 20th position. His last lap being a 146.120. Palahniuk got six tenths in his hand. Last lap for qualifying for the 19 and the number eight right now. Maybe the number 11 Still holding on to a fast one. No, Don Fossman has crossed the line. He's got a checkered flag. And Kevin Palahniuk is able to go up into 15th position, a 145.485. Do I know what city is on the side of car number 395 or the 91? Let's take a look real quick. Where's the 395? San Francisco. San Francisco. <laughs> I could tell by the egg. Negative. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that Oakland? That ain't Oakland, is it? That looks like the Bay Bridge. That looks like the Bay Bridge. Someone turn their lights on. Someone turn their lights on so I can see this livery, please. Um... Another place that's known for his bridges. Seattle? I don't know. I don't why would you put Seattle? I do have the night video presets on. But why would you have Seattle on the side of your car? Tacoma, Washington? Tacoma Narrows Bridge? Chicago. Chicago. I can't even, I can't even tell what building that is. With its little dingling hanging out like a little finger pointing up at the sky. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> With this little spire at the top. <laughs> Washington, D.C. doesn't have any bridges, but that looks like, what's up with the dome? What's up with this little Taj Mahal looking building right here? What's up with this Taj Mahal looking building? That's what I want to know. Oh shit, we got to we got to get started with the livery showcase. Enough messing around.
<laughs> Oliver Srogan in P1 for the Dive Bomb Motorsports team, holding on to a 144-2. Cooper Atherton in second place with a 720S. Mitch Nayardi in the number 32 in third place. Joshua Rodriguez in fourth place in the number 93. Daniel Hirsch in the number 48 in fifth place. Paul Hohen in sixth place with the number 22. Neil Kerbel in the number 395 in seventh place. Burt Macklin in the number four in eighth place. Bradley Cooper in ninth place, six tenths off the pace. Evan Zvog in the number 52 in 10th. Frank Castle is eight tenths off the pace. Shooter McGavin is one second off the pace. Is one second all the way back to P12. Eric Labosca Kassian in the number 55. Philip Suazo in the 213. Kevin Palnick in 15th. Bradley Smith in the number 16. Russell Stanford in 17th. Nelson Hernandez is in 18th in a Mustang. Wes Romery in his AMG Triple Four. Tyler Morgan in the AMR in 20th. Don Donovan is in the 333 in 21st. Don Fossman in the number 11. Senior Tarugo, the number 8 in 23rd. Sean Chez, the number 24th position. James May in the Pennzoil car is in 25th. Grant Sahara is in 26th. Alan Young in the 668. Hans Gruber in the 28th position. Jay Paisa in 29th. John Malott is in 30th position. Ricky Bobby is in 31st. And Buggy Watt is going to be in 32nd. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, now that we have lights on. What are these buildings? What are these buildings? I don't even know. That was like a speed run of everything. Not only the livery showcase, but giving the grid run down as well. <laughs> that was as fast as I could possibly make it. The drivers are getting ready to take the green flag. Green, 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 away we go. Frank Castle goes forward. Sogren actually leads them all as he's gaining positions up on the timing tower, but he's actually leading the race right now. Cooper Atherton is in second place. It looks pretty clean in the background. Joshua Rodriguez manages to lose one position off the snap. So does Paul Hohens going backwards a little bit. Frank Castle, Senior Chirugo, and Tyler Morgan involved in an incident earlier on, but they seem to be doing okay right now. Whoa, there's some bumping and banging going on. The AMG takes out Team Orange or Team Bluey car, and a lot of cars go off in the S's there. That's not great. There's no Sacramento, the bridge. That's not a thing. There's no Sacramento bridge. Oh, is it Vallejo? No, Vallejo doesn't have any buildings like that. Yeah, no, couldn't be Vallejo. That's a lot of contact. That's for sure. I thought this was going to be a boring race in the darkness, but Neil Kerbal trying to chase down Joshua Rodriguez. And Neil Kerbel's up one already. Paul Hohen's down one. Rodriguez is down one. And Hirsch has actually been able to maintain and gain a position overall and trying to close the door on Joshua Rodriguez out in front. And it looks like Daniel Hirsch is able to go off a little bit there to preserve his own life. And he manages to maintain those positions in front of Neil Kerbel and Josh Rodriguez. Rodriguez just keeps on tumbling backwards right now. The number 93 loses out a couple more gets bumped by Joshua Rodriguez as well and getting collected in that side-by-side -side door banging involved. Neil Kerbel does a little hip check on Josh Rodriguez trying to maintain some track space there. And Oliver Sorgan is able to do a 149.482. The first lap is already underway. Let's get the mandatory pit stop up on the board. Mandatory pit stop time will be 30 seconds. The driver will have to take tires whoa and there goes daniel hirsch spun around at turn one dip diving and dodging out of the way from everybody around let's see if there is an incident for the number 48. number 48 driving fast driving forward was he involved with something with the number 32 of mitch nyardi and Nayardi is going a little bit wide and deep and Daniel Hirsch clips the inside and ends up pit maneuvering himself there at turn one.
Burt Macklin now chasing down Joshua Rodriguez. Rodriguez has been tumbling backwards pretty steadily now, and his next victim is going to be held up by Frank Burt Macklin. Does a little hip check on Joshua Rodriguez, though. Rodriguez has just been getting bumped and banged all over the place right now. And there goes a little bit more door banging for Joshua Rodriguez, and he takes out Burt Macklin in the process. And that will probably be the end of those two's race tonight. Yep, return to pits. Uh, there's some more door banking involved in that. Looking on the rear wing of Frank Castle, we're chasing down by Cooper Atherton. Bradley Cooper, excuse me, and Shooter McGavin side by side right now. GTR versus AMR. And it looks like everything is neat and tidy for these two gentlemen right now. Hopefully things finally settle down and uh, things will get a little bit less hectic than they have been so far. Uh, but yeah, yikes indeed. Yikes indeed. Oh, there goes Shooter McGavin up the inside at turn one, trying to go for a move a little bit opportunistic there. Yeah, Nayardi's doing a great job holding on to P3, staving off Neil Kerbal in the background. That McLaren's really good at tracks like this where it's just well-rounded and suited for these types of things. And it's good for these endurance events as well. Uh, compared to the GTR, I'm not sure who's going to be able to maintain the tires a bit better. Shuma Gavin and Frank Castle got involved in a little bit of a collision, door banging side by side. There's more door banging because Shooter McGavin leads Bradley Cooper and Frank Castle, and Castle's up the inside, hip checks. Oh man, that Mustang uh, just as bad as Burt Macklin incident earlier and now he is stuck in the worst possible position out on track and just trying to get out of the way right now Oof. involved with Bradley Cooper if I'm not mistaken the number five and the 91 getting together yep and the number five would be of Frank Castle Bradley Smith chasing down Paul Hohen. Yvonne Zvog is trying to do nasty things in the dark to Nelson Hernandez. Dirty, dirty dog, Evan Zvog. Let's check out Hans Gruber chasing down Paisa here as well. And Paisa's in the lonely LM... LMS? R8 Audi, I think? Yes, in the lone R8 Audi out on track. Gaining some momentum right now is actually Russell Stanford as he chases down Hans Gruber out in front and Jay Paisa, who is a little bit of bumping and grinding behind Sernio Tarugo, about to get passed by Don Donovan. But Donovan backs out of it at turn one, thinks twice over making a dive bomb type move. And that was sure a nice sight to see, based on everything we've seen so far tonight. Things are finally settling down, but not for Neil Kerbal and Mitch Nyardi. They're separated by three tenths right now. Up and down the grid they go, and there goes Neil Kerbal trying to look for a switchback at turn 10. And right before they get into the final sector of this track. Turn 11, things look like they've all settled in. Single file line. Nice big exhaust blowback from that McLaren. The GTR is not quite pushing as hard, I think. A little bit more lifting close. Coast out of Neil Kerbal right now. Suazo is trying to make a move up the inside. Is he going to go for it? No, at turn 12, he backs out of it. Thank goodness Sean Chez was there on the inside, and he was just existing, trying to drive his heart out. And Fossman, his teammate, is right in front in the number 11. Maybe working together just a little bit. I think someone just went into the pit lane. Wes Romery into the pits already, the triple four. In 28th position, Don Donovan tumbling down the order. The triple three involved with an accident with the number 48. Let's see what that accident looked like. And the 48, that would be Daniel Hirsch, who's trying to engage in a recovery drive for himself. 
as he goes to the inside line. The triple three driving away right now and then just going for a move on the inside at turn. Uh, I think that might be the final turn is what that looked like. And the triple three got spun around of Don Donovan. Man, oh man. This is a great shot of Neil Kerbal lighting up the Galaxy livery car of Nayardi out in front. The nice headlights of the GTR. Ooh, and Neil Kerbal almost runs into the back of Nayardi, but manages to avoid doing so, backs out of it. Let's take a look at Suazo as he's still chasing down Don Fossman. He got by Sean Chez just a moment ago. Now up the inside at turn 12, seemingly doing like he's got the move done and dusted. Holding on, pushing hard, a little bit of flashy flashy of the headlights there for some reason. Maybe he's saying good battle. <laughs> Philip Suazo got through on Don Fossman, not too bad of a job there. Evans Volg still trying to do nasty and dirty things to Nelson Hernandez, four tenths adrift right now. And then there's Team Bluey coming out of the pits, if I'm not mistaken. That's Kevin Palahniuk just rolling out right now. Joshua Rodriguez, who's tumbled down the order, looking up the inside of Senior Tarugo at turn one. And Tarugo takes a wide and escaping line to avoid the touch from Joshua Rodriguez. Evans Vogue chasing down Nelson Hernandez. Neil Kerbal chasing down Mitch Nayardi. The battle for third and fourth overall in Evans Vogue in the battle for ninth and tenth right now. Up the inside, is he gonna do it there at turn six? He does it not without a little bit of contact though. That was a big send, lick the stamp and send it for sure. Where's Eric Gakassian in all this? Seemingly in 26th position, it looks like. Already taking his pit stop now. Let's look at this three-way battle between Tarugo, Rodriguez, and Hirsch. <clears throat> and who's that in front? Alan Young, excuse me. Four-way battle for position right now. As these drivers are staying very, very, very close to each other. And Daniel Hirsch is on a recovery drive as well. And that number 48. And a little mistake there from the car out in front of Alan Young. And it looks like AMR leads Ferrari, leads AMR, leads an AMG. Now coming around turn 14 and down the front straight we go. Joshua Rodriguez in the bonsai car, hopefully not doing a kamikaze move as he dips out to the inside line. He doesn't have a wheel well along the inside of Tarugo, but Tarugo is going to give him plenty of space there on the inside, just out of self-preservation. And there's a battle up ahead between Jay Paisa and Hans Gruber as well. Paisa and Gruber. Paisa goes through on Gruber and Philip Suazo is tumbling down the order right now. Holy sh Isa. That was close. That was a little too close for comfort there. Holy smokes. It is wild and out tonight, everybody. It is getting wild and reckless here at the DRL. It is a, uh, it's a race. It's a race, that's for sure, Spenny. Maybe more like a demolition derby so far, but it's a race. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a little bit, uh, I will admit, this is a, 
a lot of action for not a lot of causation here. When we're only a couple minutes into this long 45 minute race. These drivers I do want to knock off my hat to. Hans Gruber, Alan Young, Tarugo, and Joshua Rodriguez. They've all been doing a great job of staying really close to each other. And I know that Hirsch is also battling in a recovery drive right now. And there goes Tarugo about to get past. And of course, exclamation point curse for the commentator's curse. Because just as I said that, they have all have contact with each other. And there's more contact in the background. And that is Joshua Rodriguez in 20th position having contact with Hans Gruber. And that ends very quickly. Man. Yeah, these guys were tight for sure. Um, for like an entire lap. I... I wish it lasted a little bit longer. Here goes Hans Gruber trying to snap back at Daniel Hirsch. Hirsch's last lap was a 148.0. Fast lap being a 146. Here's Shooter McGavin right now. About to get passed by Bradley Cooper if he's not careful. And Bradley Cooper trying to go around the outside. Paul Hohen sticking his wheel up on the inside. Thank you very much for the follow up, Boopy24. Appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Is it common on this track for them to make so much contact or just because it's night? Mags the Martin, <clears throat> you are asking the right questions. I am wondering the same exact thing. Um, oh my God, no. Oh my God. Paul Hohen goes for a big move up on the inside. Nitro Claw says her Garo ring usually has a lot of contact. Um, it's a it's a wider track, but I mean, it is the Monaco of the East, so I guess it's narrow and it's slow corners and it's twisty bits. It's got its hairpins involved as well, but um, I wouldn't expect this many catastrophes to have taken place so quickly uh our leader has got a 6.5 second gap and and neil kerbal going side by side this is the battle we want to watch because this is going to be good down and dirty through turn 10 they're doing it pretty well neil kerbal has to back back out of it mitch nayardi is able to defend like a lion here pulling off his best sergio perez impression see now that's how it's done now that's how it's done everybody that was epic racing. That was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think the added problem of it being night is not making this so great. But yeah, there was a lot of contacts earlier on. Uh, a lot of people out for recovery drives, as you can see from the position gained. We have Eric Acosti down 11. Josh Rodriguez is out on track right now. He's down 21. Palinik's down 11. Tyler Morgan's down 8. Road Murray's down 10. Burt Macklin's down 22. Frank Castle's down 20. Uh, Stanford's down 3. Hirsch is down 12. Uh, a lot of big gainers, though. James May, Sean Chez up 12 and 14, respectively. Paisa's up 14 as well. So a lot of drivers that are keeping it clean have just managed to survive some of this and are doing very well because of it. And here goes Tarugo about to get passed by Daniel Hirsch. If he's not careful into T1, Hirsch on his recovery drive in the number 48, getting super close to Tarugo, managing to not make contact, doing a great job. And I love those neon lights that the AMG has on it. And there goes a move up the inside at turn two, possibly. No, Tarugo was able to cover it off, doing a great job of that. Here goes back to the leaders. There goes Neil Kerbal up the inside of Nayardi. Has a big tank slapper. Can't recover it. And Nayardi is able to defend as well. Another great battle keeps on giving right now. The 395 and the number 32, Nairati, Nairati, excuse me, and Neil Kerbal going after it on the entrance to turn 11. Neil Kerbal closes down the gap under the brakes with a beautiful brakes that the GTR is able to produce. And oh, here goes more battles. Paisa is getting just tumbling down the order right now. Loses out two, one to Tarugo, one to Daniel Hirsch as well. 
and then gains it back right away. Tarugo managing to snap back somehow, some way. Let's go back 10 seconds and see if we can get a glimpse of this one. I think we're going to miss that. Yep, we sure did. Sorry about that. Let's fix my 20 for 20. That way we get a little bit more time next time. Good evening, GT Champions. GT Champions, hello. Welcome to the broadcast. You're here just in time for an exciting, uh, exciting race here at the Hungara Ring for sure. Why'd you reply to Nightbot? It's my Nightbot. Don't talk to him. He's working. Oh, Bradley Cooper coming out of the pits right now. Already taking his mandatory up the inside on the DRL car. And I believe that's Alan Young. That is Alan Young in the 668. Neil Kerbel still chasing down Nairati right now. The 395 and the 32 staying really close to each other right now, like Elmer's glue. That purple kind, though, the one that you had while you were in school, goes on purple, dries on white. <laughs> and it tastes better, too, right? Of course. GTR chasing down the McLaren. Oh, getting awfully close again at turn 13. I wonder if this GTR can produce anything going down the front straight now. Keep an eye on the GT3 battle that is Neil Kerbal versus the 720S. The GTR with his V6 twin turbo at 550 horsepower. A 3.8 liter car got its advantages being traction, tire management, stability, and its versatility out on track. But the McLaren, though, really having its advantages with its agility, aerodynamics as well. Pushing 720 horsepower, it's going to do a lot better in a straight line over than the 550 horsepower that the GT3 GTR is able to produce. Oh, there goes a big look up at the inside and just leaving enough room is Mitch Nairati up the inside at turn nine. Neil Kerbal goes a little bit off and wide and now they're going to go side by side through 10. This is going to be an epic battle to the end. No, Neil Kerbal still can't get the position secured because he's trying to demand a little bit more track space than he wants to gain a mission for. The price is going to be high, like you said. The action is going to be tight packed. It's a tight track, the Monaco of the East. There's going to be a little bit of contact if you want to get a pass going, but Nairati is able to defend very, very, very well right now. Things have finally settled down right now. Let's talk about some pit stops, everybody. Paul Hohen is first of the pitters. Eric Acosian, Joshua Rodriguez, Hans Gruber. Philip Suazo, uh, Russell Stanford, Kevin Powell, and Grant Zahara, Tyler Morgan, Wes Romery, Burt Macklin, and Frank Castle all taking their pit stop so far. 23 minutes left on the clock. We're about halfway through in this first stint. More pit stop calls coming in. Alan Young, James May into the pits. Neil Kerbel now with a 2.1 second gap to Nairati. Maybe he backed off there just to give him a little bit of breathing room. That way he can get into his own rhythm and pace. No, it was the back marker that they had to get around. Who is that lurking in between them? The 
Joshua Rodriguez in 18th place, separating the two drivers now. Traffic giveth, traffic taketh away, that's for sure here in GT3 driving. Here goes Paul Hohen now on his recovery drive in 13, 13th place. I don't know, last lap seemed pretty close as well, 146.5 to 146.6. Oh, let's get a look at Fossman and Sean Chez. Fossman's actually been sticking really close to these two, battling it out. The, uh, who, what team is this? The Sean Chez, the Party Pickles team. Oh, there goes a big look on the inside, trying to scare someone into a mistake. And there goes Daniel Hirsch in the background, trying to really close the gap on Fossman. He does so under the braking zone, that's for sure. And there goes Daniel Hirsch doing his recovery drive thing right now. And he's able to get around one of the other drivers. And he's out into the pits right now, hopefully to repair some of that damage. And he's right behind the two party pickle cars. Pit limiter on for all the drivers right now. Hopefully not impeded by the two party pickle cars going into the pits as well. There goes Neil Kerbal closing down the gap. 2.3 seconds now down to 2.1 seconds. He is slowly losing touch with the pack that he's gained up with of Mitch Nairadi. Oliver Srogan is just driving his own race right now. 44-1 being his best lap. 44-3 his last lap around. He's about nine tenths quicker than the drivers around him. And there goes the Pennzoil car in the 5-3-3. I believe that's actually Don Donovan. No, that's not Don Donovan. Who is that? That'll be James May in the triple five in the Pennzoil car. Dip diving and dodging out of the way and trying to battle that with Kevin Palnick, who is his battler out on track as they both taken their pit stops already. Chez, Fossman, Hirsch all out on track and Daniel Hirsch actually leapfrogs them both in the pit stop cycle. 33.8 stationary compared to a 35.7 and a 38.8 of Don Fossman. Oh, stop it, GT Championship. No, this is not my best commentary ever, but thank you very much for the accolades. No, <laughs> Eric Agassian turning on the high beams there. The endurance lights just came on, flashing Mitch Nairadi there. <laughs> thank you for being honest, GT Champions. <laughs> yeah, it's decent. It's not my best, that's for sure. You should have been here at the start of the race. I was, uh, I was appalled. It's late in the night for us as well, so that has something to do with it. Don Fossman chasing down Eric Gakasi and, and Nairadi in between. And this is going to be Neil Kerbal's pit stop strategy. Neil Kerbal trying to pit into some clean air right now, coming outside for the Monster Torque car. He is coming out into definite clear air. The only car in front of him right now is Burt Macklin in the number four car, who will easily pull out of the way to let uh, Neil Kerbal keep on driving. If you want good commentary, go ahead and check out my YouTube. Uh, go ahead and join the Discord that I'm in and check out the socials link. Sounds good, GT Champions. I sure will. And I'll send you a link to my highlight reel into my YouTube channel where you can actually see decent commentary of mine. Where it's not a 10 o'clock at night on a school night. Can't take too much caffeine on a night like this, everybody. Gotta let the racing be my caffeine. Things have really settled down right now. Despite having 30 drivers, 33 drivers on the grid tonight, we're down to 28. Talk to you later, GT Championships. Have a good night, brother. Ooh, James May and Kevin Palinick going side by side. Palinick was able to get through on James May, and now James May is going to snatch right back. This is the front straight right now. Coming in towards turn one, May is pulling out by quite a bit of length, and he's going to take an early apex, but this might let Palinick actually go for a switchback. No, Palinick can't get one engaged right now. This might set him up towards turn two if he can gain enough traction. No, that 
big old Mustang is carrying a lot of power beneath it and pulls out in a straight line doing very well. Joshua Rodriguez, speaking of doing very well, recovery drive for him out into 13th position in the number 93. Oh, Russell Stanford now going side by side with John Mallott. Awfully close there for just a hair. Number 20 of Russell Stanford, John Mallott in the 85 out in front of the other Bonsai car. More pits coming out. Neil Kerbel, Paul Hohen, Shooter McGavin, and Evans Vorg all into the pits right now. Neil Kerbel already taking his pit. 62.3 seconds gap between him and Nairati. And Nairati's into the pits right now. This will be the battle for the podium overall. We'll keep an eye on where Nairati comes out and where Neil Kerbel is. The 395 is all the way on the far left side of the track map. Coming through the chicane right now, it was about a 60 second gap. Neil Kerbel's gonna have to pull out the stop of his life to undercut Nairati. Sogren's also into the pits now. Nairati is just getting stationary. Alan Young, Jay Paisa, the 135 leads the 668, but not for long. The 668 makes a look up the inside. Doesn't really go for it there at turn three. Now towards turn four, the 668 going over the curbs, just absolutely yeeting it. Pedal to the metal up the inside of Paisa, he goes. Paisa goes a little bit deep and wide now to allow that to go through, but he was pushed, he wasn't shoved. And he didn't jump there. The 668's gonna go deep through the chicane and whoa, Suazo's gonna get involved. The number 213 has to tuck in behind, wanted to just skirt right on by Jay Paisa, but Paisa existed there through the chicane. And you can't really go too wide, you definitely can't go three wide there. Vogue and Bradley Smith involved in an accident. Let's take a recap and see what happened here. There is Vorg in the background. Bradley Smith in the 74. 52 from a mile back. No way, Jose. Not in your luckiest days. Whew. Gap has come down between P2 and P3 to just under half a second right now, the 395 and the 32. And the battle resumes between these two drivers. It was around two seconds before. For only 14 minutes left in this race, everybody. Don Fosbin having an accident, the 410 and the number 11 getting collected with each other. This is Buggy Watt and Don Fosbin. Fosbin again towards turn uh, four, this is, it looks like. Goes up the inside, crisscross applesauce. Buggy Watt was not going to make that corner on his best day, I don't think. And Don Fossman gets tumbled down towards 14th place. But Joshua Rodriguez, again, on that recovery drive of his, trying to get around Sean Chez. Eric Acostian is able to go through, surviving this mayhem in the number 55 GTR. And Joshua Rodriguez trying to snap back and gain some more positions. He's in 11th place. Got one pass on Sean Chez. Will he go for a move here at turn one on Eric Acostian? I don't think so. He's not nearly close enough, but he makes a look on the inside. Eric Acostian trying to go for a wider line to defend his self. And this is gonna allow Joshua Rodriguez to kind of pull out right now. Neil Kerbel and Mitch Nairati going side by side again.
Eric Kakasian did get passed by Joshua Rodriguez up into the top 10 for Rodriguez finally. The Kamikaze Benzai car does a good job. Getting past his fellow countrymen, the GTR. Neil Kerbel trying to get around Nairati one more time. Still can't do it at turn one. Still trying though, is maintaining a good distance between him and Nairati out in front. 395 behind the number 32, we could just see on the Mantini Motorsports wing. Canadian flags up on the winglets. Look at Neil Kerbel close down at turn seven. Through the chicane, just going over those curves very well. That car has got a decent right height to be able to do so versus the McLaren who can't really assault the curbs like that. Here goes Oliver Srogren getting past one of the back markers. The triple five, that would be James May. And Kevin Palahniuk pulling over to the side and letting him through, but Palahniuk's now gonna be stuck right next to James May. About one second back right now. Neil Kerbel, Mitch Nairati, battle for the podium still rages on. 10 and a half minutes left on the clock, everybody. Turn 14 we go. Let's look at Suazo chasing down Don Fossman, the battle for 14th and 15th position, the 213 and the number 11. Oh, here goes Suazo trying to do something on the number 11 of Don Fossman. McLaren on McLaren action. 720S chasing the 720S in equal machinery. And Palinik off into the wall, the number 19. Yellow flag for him. Whoa, there goes Neil Kerbel going side by side with Nairati right now up the inside of turn eight. This is gonna be a good closing lap battle. Turn nine they go. Nairati just goes a little bit deep and wide and Neil Kerbel again backs out of it seemingly for self-preservation. A little bit of contact there for Nairati into Neil Kerbel, but he's managing to lose that position. And now we've got another car getting in between them. That must be Alan Young, I think. And hopefully not getting too close to this gap. Nope, Alan Young stays clear and out of the way of the leading battling cars. Evans Vor doing a great job, having a good race right now in the eighth place position for the number 52. Positions gained overall right now. Srogren's gained zero. Nairati's up one. Neil Kerbel's up four. Paul Hohen's up two. Shooter McGavin's up seven. Twelve for Nelson Hernandez. Bradley Smith's up nine. Evans Vorg's up two. Daniel Hurst down four. Joshua Rodriguez down six. Kakassian's up two. Chez up 12. Alan Young up 14. Suazo's up nothing. Don Fossman's up seven, 13 for Jay Paisa. John Malott's up 12. James May is up six. Don Donovan up one, five for Grant Zahara. Down, down, down we go. Tyler Morgan's down two, Palnick eight. Wes Romery's down five. Hans Gruber's gained three. Boogie Watts gained six. Burt Macklin's down 19. Tarugo's down five. And Frank Castle's down 18 overall. Oh, here goes Evans Vorg trying to make up another position into the top seven now. Bradley Smith being the next car out on track that's become his victim. And there goes Bradley Smith trying to snap back, doing a switchback. Loses out of position to Daniel Hirsch, actually, as Hirsch is gaining more positions left, right, and center. Number 48 having a very clean drive, collecting positions where he can.
Suazos got Alan Young in his crosshairs right now. The 2 1 3 to the 6 6 8. Look up the inside on the 668, but he doesn't manage to hold on. And the 213 has to fall back there. Trying his best to hold on right now and get past that 668 of Alan Young. It does look like someone did lose connection. I wasn't able to catch who that was. I can definitely see that someone dropped out of the race again. Here's Nyrads and Kerbal still stuck to each other like blue. Five minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock. Cooper Atherton seems to have lost connection, unfortunately. Down to 27 drivers tonight. And there goes Neil Kerbal taking a look around the outside of turn one, trying to go the long way around Nyrati, leaving a ton of room up the inside for Nyrati to go wide. And that'll slow them both down by quite a bit. Two tenths just separating these two drivers right now. And Neil Kerbal is trying to switch back again towards turn two. Crosses over to the inside line, going for a switch back. But Nyrati is just there, there to defend the position very well. Neil Kerbal going for another look at the inside of the chicane. I think he knows that's where he can pounce now. I think he knows that's where he can pounce that McLaren not assaulting the curbs as well as that GTR can. On board with Mitch Nayarty on the front splitter even. Going towards turn 11. Neil Kerbal's too far back, eight tenths away. A little bit of a missed apex there from Nairadi. It's gonna allow Neil Kerbal to close down the gap again during the braking zone here at turn 13. Heavy on throttle though, the GTR is agile, but not as agile as the 570, the 520S. Lap traffic giveth, lap traffic taketh away. Who's that in front of them? This might be the move of the race. Three minutes left to go. The drivers are only to get this one plus one more. If my math is mathing. As Alaris Rogren is coming down through the chicane right now. Twenty-four and 21st position. That's Grant Zahara out in front right now. Leading Nairadi and Neil Kerbal. Neil Kerbal able to navigate that one pretty well, but loses out quite a bit of time. I think he's down to a second now. 
These guys have stayed close to each other all race long. Even the pit cycle stayed awfully close. Neil Kerbal able to close down a two second gap down to just under a second even. Buggy Watt getting out of the way, allowing these two drivers to keep pairing up with each other. Iradi and Neil Kerbal side by side. Tarugo, no! Lost connection, no! Not fair, man, not fair. You're in a good battle, too. Yeah, you were in a heated battle for P14, 15, 16 for quite some time. That one was exciting and close. A little bit of elbows out racing between you guys. And that's what ended it, if I remember correctly. Oh, that's the worst. Let's check out Neil Kerbal and Nairadi again. We were looking at James May and John Malott there for a second. The gap has stayed kind of close between those two, but not as close as these two guys. Pretty much all race long, staying within around a second of each other. There we go, leaders on the final lap of the race. So this one plus one more. Neil Kerbal having to navigate the worst of the lap traffic right now. Just getting the worst end of the stick right now. Chasing down Mitch Nairati. Who's gotten it somewhat easy or at least has boxed Neil Kerbal into the worst possible situation so far. John Malott and James May inverting positions and James May giving one up back over to John Malott it looks like. The bonsai car is able to go back through side by side through turn one. They go in towards turn two. John Malott around the outside. Can't hold on. James May holds on to that position in the Ford Mustang. Big tank slapper there from James May or John Malott, excuse me. And that'll be the end of this battle. Russell Stanford and Jay Paisa chasing each other down. Battle for 17th and 16th position. It looks like Russell Stanford might get a wheel well along the inside, but no, Jay Paisa just pulls away in that Audi. One second gap now separating Neil Kerbal and Mitch Nairati. Shooter McGavin having an incident, or did he finish the race? Nope, not finishing the race yet because Oliver Srogren still hasn't crossed the line yet. Oliver Srogren is taking home P1, crosses the line, finishes it out for us. But here's the battle between Nairati and Neil Kerbal still raging on. Eight tenths of a gap separating the two of them. We're going to watch this one to the bitter end. Got a couple more battles between Hirsch, Bradley Smith, and Evans Vorg. But that one just ended as Bradley Smith and Daniel Hirsch both involved in an accident there. Nairati leads Neil Kerbal, and here goes Daniel Hirsch getting around Bradley Smith, it looks like. Evans Vorg awfully close to Nelson Hernandez. Nelson Hernandez with a great drive for him out into sixth place. Race to the line, it looks like. This is going to be awfully close. Up the inside of turn 12. Defends Nelson Hernandez, parking it on the apex. Blocking off Evans Vorg from getting that point position that he needs. And this is around turn 14. And this is going to be Nelson Hernandez's race to lose right now. He's going to hold on, but that Mustang's just going to pull away from that McLaren in the background. Great driving. I want to talk to Nelson Hernandez. I want to talk to him after this race. This was amazing. Great job. 
Oliver Sorgren, Mitch Nairati, Neil Kerbel, Paul Hohen, Shooter McGavin, Nelson Hernandez, Evans Vorg, Daniel Hirsch, Bradley Smith, Joshua Rodriguez, Eric Kakassian, Sean Chez, Philip Suazo, Don Fossman, Alan Young, Jay Pisa, Russell Stanford, James May, John Malott, Don Donovan, Grant Zahara, Tyler Morgan, Hans Gruber, and Buggy Watt. Stand by. We're going to be going to the race highlights in just a moment. Stand by. Let's grab the man himself, Nelson Hernandez. Nelson Hernandez, hello, can you hear me? Yes. What an amazing race out of you, Nelson Hernandez. How many positions do you think you gained overall? Oh, geez, bro, like maybe like 12. Maybe 15, maybe 12, I'm not even sure to be honest. I think you gained a little bit more than that. Let me see where you are. Nelson Hernandez, you gained 12 positions overall. You did an absolute great job driving that one. Okay. What was the secret yeah, to getting a sixth place finish here at the Hungaro Ring? To be honest, when, when I was waiting for Smith to pit and when we both went to pit, we were both assuming that we were going to end up way back, but we didn't know that we were you know, pretty far away from the pack. Yes. Yeah. I think when we pit it, he was in fifth, I was in sixth, and then we ended up being in sixth and seventh. So I'm guessing only one car passed. So I was like, wow, bro. I mean, couldn't plan it any better, but I mean, it played out. It played out pretty good. Now, did you have any on lap battles? We saw you battling it out with Evans Vorg toward the end. Was it all for pace? Uh, were you just driving in clean air the entire time? Or did you have to keep your nose clean? What was the strategy there? Well, towards the last, we were fighting for position pretty much. If he would have, if he would have gotten in front of me, it would have been, I would have been in seven. He would have been in six. But I mean, good defending from him. You know, he tried to get me to make some mistakes here and there, but I still managed to be able to catch it, except for the little tight, tight right, tight left turn. I messed up on the last, on the last lap pretty much. I messed up a little bit and pretty much crossed over a little bit. So then just continue on, pretty much try to, try to save the position. Now, what do you think about keeping your nose clean for this entire race? Did you have any damage? Did you have any incidents with anybody? No, I feel like this is, I feel like this is one of the best tracks that I've had that I didn't, I don't think I've even touched anybody at all or hopefully didn't hinder anybody, uh, you know, position, I guess. But yeah, it was, and I think that it was, was one of the big secrets to your race win was how clean you kept your race. You were pretty much silent but deadly the entire time. Started in P18, finishing it off in P6. Uh, that's 12 positions gained overall, and I credit that to your clean driving style that you're able to show off. And really, you just stayed in clean air, and it looks like you didn't have to battle anybody where you didn't. Great defending from Evans Vorg. Uh, were you worried about anybody else passing you up, like you said, during the pit cycle, maybe? Um, Smith, my only, my only main object was to, hopefully, when me and Smith went to pit, I was hoping that my time was going to be faster out of the pit, which ended up being the case. So, 
that's that's the only reason why I think I ended up being in front of him. And uh, yeah, because he was doing pretty good throughout the whole pace of the race. Pretty much, I was behind him majority of the time. So I was just trying to catch up with Myth, but then he ended up that that little pit change with the time helped me out a lot. Yeah, it looks like you gained about seven seconds there, six and a half seconds there in the pit cycle. Uh, 32.9 stationary for yourself, and Bradley Smith had a 39.4, potentially repairing some damage there. Um, so yeah, uh, that pit cycle yeah, definitely worked out in your favor. Yeah, luckily I was like, do I have any damage? I think I left the damage on and everything, but it didn't really, since I didn't have any damage, it didn't really add any time. I think it was like 27, but because I knew that he was ahead of me a little bit, once he went into the pit, I thought that his time was going to be less than mine, but then he told me his time, because we were talking, he told me his time, I was like, oh damn, bro, really? And as soon as my time finished, his finished, but I managed to get ahead of him right, right before he started accelerating. So how close were you guys heading into the pits? Must have been closer than that six and a half second gap then, right? Oh, probably about, I want to say maybe two. Oh, two, wow. Two seconds. Two, like two, two point, well, about a hundred seconds. Yeah, we weren't even that far. But my only wow. concern was just the time that he was going to be in the pit compared to mine, which luckily it worked in my favor because I guess he had a little bit of damage. So that ended up adding some more time for him. But... Besides that, though, I mean, it was a great race all around. I mean, I didn't expect to finish where I did, to be honest. Yeah. A very huge surprise. <laughs> I didn't think that we were doing that good, that we were that far ahead of the other, of pretty much eighth, you know, eighth place. But it was good. That was not good. That was great out of you, Nelson Hernandez. Great job driving that one home and commanding that victory in class, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you did a great job driving this one home. Let's see, where did you end up? Yep, first in your class ahead of Bradley Smith, that's for sure. And you came in second between all the pro-am categories. And like you said, you came in sixth overall. Yep. I was surprised. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, wow, bro, this is the first time that I finished this yeah. high up. <laughs> Do you have a feeling like you're going to get promoted to pro-am next season or right where you lay? Um... I'm not sure yet. Depends on how the rest of the races go, maybe. But if I feel if I feel like I'm ready for it, then maybe I'll ask, you know, to be moved up to the program. But for right now, I feel like my time on certain tracks is not consistent to a pro am driver. You know, does that make any sense? No, yeah, 100. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, it's just your consistency that you're worried about the most, and the cleanliness of your races as well. And I think you're doing a great job of showcasing where tracks suit you and that Ford Mustang. And this should not have been a track that suited the Ford Mustang, to be honest with you, but you managed to do very well on a track that didn't suit your driving, that suited your driving style more than it suited the car, I think. Yeah, I feel like that was the difference. It was like, because the car wasn't that great, but I was just getting used to the whole track. You know, I said, you know, you know what? I said, forget the car. Let me try to get the feel of the track and see if that helped me a little bit better, which that's, that's what actually that's what I started doing, and that's what actually helped me, you know, to take turns a little bit better, not lose control too much, tying my braking point pretty much, and then just start try to, you know, hang in there after I got out of the pits. It was just the whole mission to try to get in front, just stay, stay ahead, you know. Good job, Nelson Hernandez. Is there anything else in your race that you want to mention or anybody you want to thank before I let you go? Just want to thank Smith for a great racing. If it wasn't for the split seconds in the pit, he would have had this race. Oh, good sportsmanship out of you, Nelson Hernandez. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much for joining me in the broadcast booth. You're welcome, Saga. You have a good one, all right? You too, Thanks brother. Be safe. Interview. Let's grab Neil Kerbal and Mitch Nairati. Neil Kerbal, Nairati, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing very well, thank you. Awesome. You guys... I am exhausted. <laughs> likewise, likewise. You guys are pushing not only their cars, but you guys are pushing each other pretty hard out on track. How do you guys feel after basically doing that for almost an hour straight? Uh, as Neil said, it's pretty taxing for sure. I think 
after we navigated the carnage of the first couple corners and realized that we kind of escaped the worst of it, it was then, at least in my perspective, just trying to make that McLaren as wide as possible, knowing that it handles well in the corners, just trying to not give him anything and uh, not, definitely not doing any hot lapping or qualifying stint laps. I was about a second off of my hot lap pace, just making sure that I wouldn't let him by. And Neil, how did you feel like you could attack with that McLaren being so nimble and agile through a lot of these high speed corners? It looked like you were attacking the chicane a little bit more aggressively. Was that your passing opportunity that you're going to go for? That was the only passing opportunity that I had on Mitch. He made that McLaren so wide, he put up an amazing defense. Oh, man. Was there anywhere else that you could think that you were trying? I mean, you were trying to make moves happen everywhere for basically the entire first, let's say, 30 or so minutes. And then I saw you going after that chicane repeatedly over and over again, closing down the gap from about a second down to around four tenths every single time. Was there anywhere else that you thought you had an opportunity that you had tried and it didn't work out? Uh, the long finishing line straight, I could gain maybe two to three tenths on Mitch, but that McLaren just carries too much speed through the corners, and there are many corners at Hungara Ring, so like I could make up the distance, but I could not make a pass. There was a few times that I tried to pass him in turn one, and he just took the inside line and held it. Oh, well, that's partially yeah. credit to being taught proper trail breaking and improvements in my trail breaking technique from you as well so you kind of have yourself to thank for a defense like that so just really excited to have been a part of a battle like that and really made me work for that p2 finish yeah you earned it i really really enjoyed battling with you mitch that was a ton of fun likewise i hopefully can well not hopefully because i want to still finish races ahead of you but uh i'd be interested to see what it's going to be like on the other end of things where i'm definitely going to be staring at your tail lights for the majority <laughs> we'll see now, what I'm curious about is the pit stop cycle. Neil, you pit first. Was it your plan to try to undercut Nairati? Yeah, I saw there was somebody in front of him, and I was hoping he would have gotten slowed down because I was about two seconds behind. Yeah. So I pit early, and I made up maybe one to one and a half seconds in the pit stop strategy, and I basically came out of the pits like half a second behind Mitch. So it's it's pretty much it was a short break. Yeah, and then in Irati, what was that like for you when you saw that Neil Kerbal had gone into the pits? What were you thinking about, Mitch? At that moment, um, I went into the race with the plan of uh, overfueling quite a bit and going for a pretty long first stint and then kind of anticipating the track rubbering in on my fresh set uh, later on in the race. Um, so when I saw that he uh, ducked out behind me to go for his stop, I was considering whether or not I wanted to respond to the undercut right away on the following lap because he'd just gone in behind me, or whether I wanted to, to push to the end of my fuel. And um, I was able to get past some of the back markers pretty quickly and opted to try to make the most of the somewhat clear air that I had, but ultimately <laughs> it didn't do too much for my race as Neil was right back there as soon as I came out. Yeah, that's what I was surprised about as well. It looked like you had navigated the back markers very well, but all of a sudden that gap was now half a second. It was a pleasant surprise, I'm sure, for Neil Kerbal as well, uh, making that undercut work. But what really forced you to change up that way as we're watching some of Neil Kerbal's attempts at overtaking Nairati here on the, on the big screen? Um, yeah, I think it was just a matter of really trying to gamble on myself and my own abilities to put in some solid laps while he was in a stop and also having my fingers crossed that he might miss his markers or you know have to repair some damage or anything like that i actually suffered uh, a decent amount of aerodynamic damage early on in the race and i opted to just live with it through the entirety of the race so i saved probably about eight and a half seconds and ultimately my podium by choosing to ignore those repairs which is a first for me Oh, wow. Why Why did you decide to ignore those repairs? Was the car working okay? Were your times good enough? What was it that made you just say, screw it, I'm not going to take the repairs anyways? Yeah, it was basically that. I felt like the car was okay. Like, I knew I was not going to be putting in my qualifying time or anything close to that, but the car felt stable enough as long as I kept things under control and I didn't try to overdrive it too much. So I figured for the, the net time gained uh, for avoiding having the repairs would do me better because I've been screwed over even this season with opting for even three to five seconds repairing body and aero damage, which ultimately would have costed me a place or two just in terms of track position alone. So I took the gamble and luckily tonight it paid off. Well, yeah, that's a good call to make. And the high arrow that the McLaren comes with innately 
Uh, it sounds like you didn't need most of it. Maybe a little bit lower wing setting next time is, is the, gonna be the call? Yeah, maybe if they give these Mustangs any more horsepower down the straights, they're gonna need to take some off the rear wing, so uh, <laughs> definitely. But I'm gonna keep that splitter maxed out. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Is there anything in your race that we may have missed or anything else that you guys wanna talk about before I let you go we watch the rest of these highlights? Since you uh, finished I'm, ahead of me, Mitch, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, no, nothing too much, really. Um, I just want to give a, a big shout out to both Shogren for his first DRL race win. So a big congratulations to him. Uh, he was unstoppable tonight. Just as soon as I heard uh, my crew chief tell me that a 43 was put on the board, that I figured he was probably going to be safe and fairly untouchable. And after the first couple of corners and him and Atherton made off like bandits, I knew that the fight was really for the top step. And uh, also wanted to shout out Atherton, who had an unbelievable drive tonight, but unfortunately lost connection to the server. Otherwise, my P2 would have been all his, and this would have been a fight for the last step on the podium instead of for a two and three. So um, if Cooper rewatches this, have it head up high, man. You're a great driver and you're fast, and I'm sure I'll be seeing you on track again uh, and around you pretty soon. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, Neil. Um, yeah, shout out to all the drivers that Mitch called out. Amazing drive to everyone. Um, Hungar Ring is a is a pretty difficult track for a car that maximizes straight line speed. Um, so uh, Mitch put in the work, he put in the practice, and uh, it, it showed. So congratulations. it's uh, my heritage home Grand Prix. I'm born in Canada, but my family's first generation Hungarian. So I've always made a point back when I played the F1 games, and now here I always try to do this track proud, uh, trying to learn the language too, so that way I can. You know, scream at Jim in Hungarian instead of English when he gives me false information. So, <laughs> just happy to, because we don't have Canadian Tower Motorsport Park or uh, Circuit de Gilles or a dozen other great Canadian tracks. This is, for all intents and purposes, my home race. So, happy to have gotten this one done tonight. Is there any shout out that you want to give in uh, Hungarian for for giving it a try at least? No, no, my, my language is not there yet. I could tell you what beer and wine is, but uh, that's about it right now. You can shout beer and wine, and it'll sound like uh, grazie mille, I'm sure. Uh, well, beer is schur, and boar is uh, wine. So beer and wine is schur is boar. So everyone have a uh, big glass of beer or wine, which is ednad pohar schur is boar. So... That sounds Everyone good enjoy. enough to me. Thank you very I'm much, I'm ahead of you boys. on the boar. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you again. Thank you very Thanks, much. Sir. Take care. Bye, guys. And that's going to wrap it up just in time. Nairadi and Neil Kerbal talking about their podium finishes that they just had. And we just watched Sogren take home his first victory here at the Hungaro Ring. Headed on over to the Ending Soon page. There it is. This is going to wrap it up here for us tonight, folks. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Thank you very much for hanging out, as always. Uh, apologize for my energy levels not being as high as they should be. But thank you very much for sticking through with me to the very, very end. Love you guys so much and have a wonderful evening. And please always remember to stay safe. Good night.